Vanderbilt on Saturday. Another good crowd at Humphrey Coliseum. And the Bulldogs got a really nice win over the Vanderbilt Commodores. It was not it was not necessarily the cleanest game. Um, Vanderbilt just struggles to make shots. Mississippi State at times struggles to make shots as well. But Tolu Smith was an absolute beast. He has another double-double, and he did it this time when he started the second half with zero rebounds. He had yeah. zero rebounds in the first half of that basketball game and still, hey, Dad, finished with a double-double on Saturday in the win against Vanderbilt. Yeah, I, I agree with your assessment of things. That, that it, uh, If they had been playing anybody other than Vanderbilt, they might have been in some trouble. But, I mean, that's my first time to really watch Vanderbilt this year, and you, you see why they, they struggle the way they did. They, they can't make shots. And uh, as your friend Mark Wise would tell us, that, that is the single most important thing you have to do if you want to win a basketball game is make shots, and they, they had trouble doing it. Um I thought State played really well defensively. Now, I think Vanderbilt helps them in that that regard. But I thought that, for the most part, they contested shots. Uh, they, they were good on the boards. Uh, but Tolu was definitely the difference in, in this one and then played a, a really good game. Um, and one thing I did like from him in this game was that, you know, he struggled on the free throw line early in the game. And so Vanderbilt kind of went hack-a-shack on him and decided we're going to put him on the line and try to get back in this, and then he makes five of his his last six free throws mm-hmm. to ice the game for Mississippi State. That's good. Um, so they needed a win. They needed a win. They This is a really tough stretch coming up for them right now. Four straight quad one opportunities. Three of them are on the road. Uh, they need to find some – got to start stacking up some wins and building up that resume. And they, 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 A loss to – I've come to the conclusion that Vanderbilt is the toughest game on the schedule for every SEC team this year. Because everybody is on on thin ice. They're like, can't lose, cannot lose this one. Anybody else you play, you're like, all right, we can bounce back from that if something goes wrong. This one, it's a resume killer. So State got through the trap, and now they move on to uh, to bigger and better things. I actually think we overplayed that. You know, when you really dig into Mississippi State's schedule, yes, a loss to Vanderbilt would have looked bad on the resume. And if they ended up being a bubble team at the end of the year, then it could be the difference in getting in or not getting in. But Mississippi State's net is going to be fine. It's not going yeah. anywhere because of this schedule that they play. Yeah. And, and I don't know that we did a, a good drop. enough job really examining eight of their first nine conference games. Vanderbilt this past Saturday being the exception are all quadrant mm-hmm. one games because of the combination of where they're played. They, they played yeah. the right ones on the road and the right ones at home for all of those games to fall into the quad one category, which is it's a daunting schedule early for Mississippi State. State's net took a hit uh, losing this game, but I think it took a bigger hit because if you look at their schedule, half of the teams they've beaten lost this weekend. Northwestern lost, North Texas lost, Washington State lost, um, somebody else that they've beaten lost. And so they dropped down to 40. If they if they can get a couple of wins in these next four, if they can, you know, I'll, I'll just throw out the, the two games that they have the 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 best opportunity. I think are at Florida and at Ole Miss. So if they win those two games, Net's going to be sitting there pretty comfortably in the mid thirties, uh, going into a back half of the schedule where you have a, a little bit a little bit easier path. There's still a lot of difficult games, some landmines to navigate, but it's not this. These first nine games are just ridiculous for State. Yeah. Vanderbilt's best player is Ezra Mignon. He's their point guard. He handles the ball a ton. He had scored in double figures in 14 of the 15 games that he had played in this season. Um, He had a streak of 15, uh, what was it? He had had 10 straight games with 15 or more points prior to the game against Auburn last Wednesday night. I think he had 11 in that game. Mignon was absolutely handcuffed by Mississippi State. He had three points and only attempted three shots, and he only got to the free throw line one time. This is a guy that gets himself into position to score. He's not a three-point shooter at all. He's only got four three-point attempts in conference play this season. So his, his deal is trying to get downhill, get in traffic, A lot of ball fakes. Mississippi State didn't fall for any of that. They forced the ball out of his hands 
for 40 minutes, or, or at least for the 34 minutes that he was on the floor. I, I thought that was the best piece of what Mississippi State did defensively against Vanderbilt on, on Saturday. They took Vanderbilt's best player and completely neutralized him. I thought another thing that Vanderbilt hit some tough shots. Like they, they, they hit four or five turnaround, fadeaway jump shots that I just like, that shot shouldn't go in. They were well defended and, and they just kind of heaved it up there and they went in. You know, I, I thought from a defense, I, I, I don't know the advanced metrics on it, but it feels like State probably should have only given up like 45 points in this game. But Vandy hit five or six shots that, you know, were not high percentage shots. Yeah, Tyron Lawrence had a couple of those. I think Evan Taylor had one. Van Allen Lubin had a couple of those. One of them, he just shot straight over the top of Tolu Smith. I mean, it was like from eight yeah. feet out, and it went like 15 feet in the air, just up over his hand and just dropped it, barely even touched the uh, the net. I, I thought it was a good win for Mississippi State. Um, Jason Rivera-Torres, freshman guard for Vanderbilt, had been playing really well. He had scored in double figures in all four SEC games prior to the game. Uh, they held him to seven points. Uh, we, we mentioned, you know, a second ago, Ezra Bagnon. It was really good. And then for Mississippi State, I thought there was pretty good balance. Uh, Tolu Smith goes for 25 and 11, four offensive rebounds, 11 total rebounds in the second half. DJ Jeffries has 10 points in the game. Josh Hubbard has 11 in the game, made a couple of threes. Watching Mississippi State's crowd react to Josh Hubbard every single time he touches the basketball, Borky, is really fun. Like there is a, there's like a ripple in the crowd. Every time the ball is into his hands on the perimeter, people's arms go up because they think he's about to shoot another three. And then, you know, that that's the reaction. Your arm goes up and then you cheer if it goes in and you just kind of drop your arms to your side. Every time the ball gets to his hands on the perimeter, that starts to happen. And then people are like disappointed when he passes it. He, he's got a chance to, to be special. And, and hey, dad, I, from a shooting standpoint, it was okay. For, for Mississippi Man, State, was great. yeah, 43% from the field, 12 of 22 from the free throw line. they got to figure out the free throw line thing. It's already cost them one game in the SEC. They don't figure that out. It's going to be more than one. Yes, yes. And and first half was rough, but like I said, they finished it strong. Maybe they can build that momentum into the next game. 